What if I told you that there is a power forward build out there that can bomb threes, break ankles, run point, and also dominate on the park? What's going on everybody, Jack Bill up with another NBA 2K20 build video for you guys today. And this is arguably the cheesiest and also the best park build in NBA 2K20 all time, guys. I've been in the lab grinding to actually give you guys this build and I have finally came to the ultimate conclusion that this is the best park build in the game by far. Like always guys, likes are always appreciated. Let's try to get 500 likes for this speed boosting stretch demigod build. If you're new to the channel, hit that sub button, that bell. We're on the road to 100,000 subscribers and the past month has been amazing. Like sometimes I even get emotional throughout the couple days that I've you know, seen my you know metrics go up on YouTube. It's amazing the amount of support I'm actually getting from you guys and I truly do appreciate it, all right? But enough self-promotion. I just wanna say I'm not gonna veer away from NBA player builds either. I just wanted to give you guys this build because I've been working on it for a good amount of time now to give you guys the best possible build in the park. This is also a build that you can run with specifically on the one-on-one -on -one stage courts because some people are just sick and tired of teammates selling them out or you know maybe the internet for them is kind of going in and out. This is a build that you can grind for your rep and also your win percentage by yourself, okay? That's the point of this video. We will be able to dominate on the stage by yourself, not relying on anybody else, but your own jump shot and your own skills on the sticks, guys. It's a great build to have in your back pocket when you're simply trying to grind and no one else is online. All right, so enough of that. Let's jump into the video. So we're making the player a power forward, not a center. We're making him a power forward for the most amount of badge upgrades, okay? We're making him right-handed. You can make him left-handed, right-handed. That doesn't matter. You can make the jersey number, whatever you want. I'm going with number one because this is the best build numero uno. Yeah, let's keep going. So for the uh, skill breakdown pie chart, we're going with this one. If you go with the full playmaking, some people say, oh, you have you know better handles with the build. But if you think about it, you want to have enough shooting badges to truly dominate with this player, okay? If you don't have the right shooting badges, you're not gonna be able to knock down threes. Hence, you're only truly going to be this like point forward, but like a bad point forward, okay? So that's why we're going with the playmaking and shooting pie chart all right now for the physical profile we're going with the top one and let me just explain myself if you go with this one with a, like, a good amount of strength you're not going to be fast enough to actually dominate your opponent okay remember everything's going up plus eight because once you win an nba championship gym rat badge will give you plus four and then also when you actually make the player 99 that's another plus four and if you make the player 99.9 .9, it's actually a total of plus nine attributes on all your physical so do the math there, this is not the right physical profile we want. With this one, you have an 84 speed, guys. An 84 speed on a speed boosting stretch demigod? Yes, please, okay? And remember, this is going to be a one-on-one -on -one type of park build. And yes, it does have a liability on strength, but if you think about it, sometimes those centers, and actually a lot of the times, those centers that you're maybe going up against in the one-on-one -on -one courts, they screw up. They don't really, they don't really, you know, get a lot of their shots in the paint sometimes, especially with how tall this player is going to be. I'm not too concerned. Once you get the ball, or if you have, you know, game winner ball, they're going to be able to destroy everybody. I would be shocked if you even missed a shot with this build, okay? That's how dominant it's going to be. All right, so for the physical profile, we're going with the top one. Let's jump into this. Now, this is the trickiest, and I literally have spent like a day trying to figure out the best attribute setup that I had to screenshot it once I saw it because I didn't think I was gonna be able to replicate it again, okay? So we're making it driving dunk, standing dunk, maxed out, all right? Now, after that, we are going to max out the mid-range and three-point shot and upgrading the free throw just enough to a 58 and then maxing out the post fade. The reason I'm making it a 58 is once again, this is a park build, not a pro-am build, okay? And if you go 57, then you lose out on the shooting badge. So we're going with 58 on the free throw, pretty much maxing everything out on the playmaking as well. It's like, we're not going to be, you know, doing certain things there. Um, we're not gonna be, you know, not upgrading that. It's very important for this build. We're actually going to take one away though from the passing accuracy. If we take two away, then we lose out on the badge as well. So these are the attributes. We're so far have maxed out driving dunk and standing dunk, maxed out all of the shooting and made the free throw a 58. So we didn't max that out. Now for the playmaking, we maxed out almost everything but left the passing accuracy at an 82. 
Now let's upgrade the defense. Now this was the trickiest part. I spent like an hour trying to figure out the right attribute setup and it's very, very tricky. So first we're gonna be maxing out the perimeter and interior defense, as well as the lateral quickness. Now, remember guys, everything's relative here. I mean, if you have a 60, you know, perimeter defense on a stretch, that's actually really good. It's weird this year. Like a lot of people looked at the attributes this year and they said, oh, this is a bad player. It's got a 60 something defense. This is actually better than having a 75 defense on a point guard, because when you think about it, this player is going to be big and tall, okay? That's gonna take up more space on the court. It's going to mean that your player's gonna have a wider stride. Like everything's relative this year when it comes to height in this game. It's not all about the attributes. And I feel like a lot of people that don't play park don't get that. So just keep that in mind. This player is going to dominate even with the defense that we have, okay? Enough ranting, let me keep going and upgrading these attributes. So we're gonna be upgrading the steel to a 51, okay? The reason we're doing that is because we're gonna retain the rest of our attributes for upgrading block and upgrading that defensive slash, or just defensive rebounding. But we have a total of five defensive slash rebounding badges. And on top of that, 20 playmaking, 18 shooting, and one finishing. But this is absurd to have at a type of build that we're gonna create. I mean, look at the attributes already, guys. Everything's going up plus four, plus five when you make the player 99. So that means like a 71 standing dunk a 69 driving dunk and if you add boost i'm sure that's going to help you out even more and park dunks are pretty you know lenient this year when it comes to ratings you can have like a 60 something rating and still get some ridiculous park dunks so this is just like so cheesy to have and then on top of that your three point and mid range will still actually go up we're still going to adjust some things to even make it better uh, ball handling will also be better. It's going to be able to get us to around a 71-72 when it's all said and done. I just think this is a really amazing setup, guys. Like, I'm so psyched. I'm making this build as soon as I'm done editing this video, all right? So after that, for the body shape, we're going built for the widest shoulder width, okay? This is going to help us out because the physics this year in 2K, if your player is wider, means you'll be able to catch your opponent, especially when he's trying to do those cheesy dribble moves. You'll be able to catch them on, like, you know, your right hand or left hand whatever when you're trying to you know stride left or right you got to have the wider shoulder width because it's going to help you stop a lot of people all right so after that we're going to make the height six foot eight a lot of people get pretty heated about this but at six foot eight you get a boost a huge boost in your ball handling now we're actually going to adjust this even more so we can get elite dribble moves okay that's pretty crazy or actually pro dribble moves i'm sorry pro dribble moves this is great because not only are we going to be able to have even more speed meaning we'll have like an 86 speed we'll also have like an 85 three-point shot it's actually going to go even higher than that um, we still have to adjust one more thing the ball handling is going to go over a 70 when it's all said and done I'll take minus two on interior defense and minus one on the block to get another plus one on driving dunk, another plus one on driving layup, plus two on three point, free throw is gonna go up, I'm not concerned about that, but also your passing accuracy is going back up to an 83, so that attribute that we took away, it's gonna go back up to an 83, so I'm not concerned there. And then also the ball handling is gonna go up plus five, that's a huge game changer. Everything on the physicals is gonna go up as well, except for strength, I'm not worried. Now, for the weight, we're actually going to do a certain thing here where we're able to get a good amount of lateral quickness and vertical. I'm not concerned about strength here. So I'm going to do as much as I can to get a boost without taking away too much weight for this build. I don't want it to be, you know, I'm not getting any type of interior defense. I still want to have some. So just in case a center, you know, goes on, kills me, I can at least hold my own. Um, so we're actually going to increase this just enough so we still retain all those attributes. So we're going to go with, we're still going to increase it and we're actually going to go around, I want to see, I think I saw a 75 acceleration here. So yeah, we're going to go with 209. It's still going to give us a good amount of weight. We're taking a little bit hit in our interior defense. We get plus one on lateral quickness. And once again, guys, our acceleration and vertical goes up. So the weight is going to be 209. Now for the wingspan, I'm not going to be decreasing it all the way like some people are decreasing it all the way. I don't think that makes a lot of sense. I'm going to go 81 here just to give me a little bit more chance on the rebounding, a little bit more chance on the blocking as well. As you guys can see, it took a slight hit, but now we have pro dribble animations, which is like a game changer for this build. Like, 
I can't explain how important it is to have the 70, at least the 70 ball handle for even some of the power forwards or small forwards this year. If you have something below that, it's gonna be hard. Like you'll still be able to ISO if you really, really need to. And that's kind of for like a Giannis type of build. You'll have less than that for ball handling, but for any of the type of other player that we're trying to create, like a stretch demigod, it's such in this case, we're gonna be creating this wingspan at an 81 inch wingspan. Now for the takeover, some people, I saw some YouTuber do the playmaking takeover. It's not as good as having the sharp takeover. Sharp takeover means you're gonna create more space. You're gonna be able to break down people anyway because the badge that we're gonna have, you're gonna be able to crack ankles left and right, okay? So understand that. But if you go playmaking takeover, like I don't really think there's a true boost. There's really only a boost in your ball handling with that. So I really wanna go with the sharp takeover because it's gonna once again space the floor. I'm gonna be able to bomb threes from half court. And that's why this is very similar to a 2K15, 16, maybe even 2K19 stretch demigod, okay? So we're going with the sharp takeover. Let's continue and show you the badges that I will be rolling with. Pretty interesting. They gave me Al Horford, Danilo Gallinari, and also Jason Tatum. Interesting type of player comparisons. I don't think that's very accurate, but let's test out the build and show you the badges that I will be rolling with today. All right. So the first thing we're going to be doing is making this player 99. So you guys can see the full firepower of this build. Everything's going up plus four or plus five on the left and then plus eight or plus nine on the right. So do a screenshot, take a look at the dominance. The sheer dominance of this build is going to have like an 86 speed an 84 acceleration on a speed boosting stretch it's also going to have a huge boost in rebounding when you make the player 99 it's going to have like an 80 rebound everything in the defense is going to be in the high 60s or you know low 70s not too shabby and then on top of that like you're going to have like a 75 ball handling like some point guards you know that make certain type of builds won't even have that so you're going to have a higher ball handling then some small forwards and some guards, and you're gonna be able to bomb threes with a sharp takeover. You're also gonna have an 87, 88 three-point shot. Like guys, this is ridiculous, all right? So we're going with this build, this pie chart, and everything here, let's go to the badges. So for the finishing badge, I'm thinking we're probably gonna have to go with contact finisher just to give me a boost in my like, I, you get a boost in your dunking tendency when you upgrade this but feel free to upgrade it, you know, maybe fancy footwork if you're doing hop dunks. Um, you know, it's kind of down to your discretion. I'm gonna go contact finisher because I know my dunking tendencies do go up, especially with the other type of builds that I have. So I'm upgrading that to bronze, all right? Now for the badges for shooting, you already know you gotta go range extender and quick draw hall of fame. If you don't do that, you're doing it wrong, okay? So for the other badges, remember, this is a one-on-one -on -one stage type of build. I really want him to dominate when it comes to shooting by himself, creating enough space for himself, greening shots by himself, all right? So we're not gonna be upgrading catch and shoot, but if you want to, feel free. If you're running some 3v3, you know, you can clearly dominate with this build. I mean, it's a no-brainer that you'll be able to green threes regardless, but you can upgrade catch and shoot if you are playing with teammates. But specifically here, I'm gonna go green machine. This is going to help me out greening shots and you get a higher green light window after you green your first shot. So, I mean, it's pretty much a no-brainer to have that one. Um, for the other ones, like it's pretty difficult to choose based off of like the power forward play style. But if I did have to pick, I would most likely go volume shooter at least on silver which is going to give us room for one more hall of fame badge and i could go dead eye to help me out if the, you know the guy is closing out on me you could also go uh steady not steady shooter but tireless shooter because that can help you out when you're kind of dribbling the ball and you know time's winding down you'll still be able to green shots when you're you know fatigued but if i'm talking you know meta here i'm probably gonna have to go with Deadeye or Hot Zone Hunter. One of those two is definitely a great badge setup. So that's four Hall of Fame badges right there. Now here's the fun part, playmaking. Oh my God, I'm gonna be able to dominate because I'm gonna have quick first step on a power forward Hall of Fame, okay? That is insane to have tight handles. We're not gonna be upgrading that yet, but I do wanna upgrade handles for days Hall of Fame. This is once again gonna help me ISO when I am, you know, one-on-one -on -one 
against another guy, okay? Now, we're not gonna be upgrading Dimer because once again, this is going to be a one-on-one -on -one type of build, but I'm gonna be upgrading Space Creator. Now, the funny thing is that I'm looking at the screen right now, I didn't even realize that Ankle Breaker is not even an option because that would make this build a demigod tenfold, right? But Space Creator acts as a way to break ankles when you do the step back animation. So remember that, guys. That's a game changer. It's basically Ankle Breaker disguised as a jump shooting type of badge. So keep that in mind. Now for the other two Hall of Fame badges, I'm gonna go tight handles and unpluckable, but feel free to you know upgrade post spin technician as well. Like that's a great badge setup to have. I mean, look, five Hall of Fame. So already guys, we have nine Hall of Fame badges on a power forward, a power forward, okay? This is insane. I'm so excited to make this build. Um, but yeah, we're gonna be upgrading clamps on silver and then intimidator on gold. I see a lot of people you know, make clamps on gold, and I was even kind of a proponent for making clamps on gold, um, but you don't really need that. You just need it on silver. Intimidator is honestly the best defensive badge to have. If you have one defensive badge upgrade, of course, go for clamps, but if you have like three, go bronze clamps and silver intimidator 100% of the time. This is going to decrease the green light window for the opponent, not only on jump shooting, but also just shooting in general, like post hooks. You're gonna go up against, you know, post hookers in the game, they're cheesy, but you will be able to stop them as long as you have Intimidator on gold, guys. So this is the badge setup and everything here. I know this is probably a pretty lengthy video and I do apologize for that, but this is the stretch playmaking demi god built nine hall of fame badges one gold two silver one bronze i hope you all did enjoy this video don't forget to drop a like if you're new to the channel hit that sub button that bell i appreciate all the love and support guys yeah let's try to get 500 likes on this video and comment down below if this is the best park build in the game right now have a good one guys peace